Ripple me this, riddle me that, a balloon ride through a wormhole, you'd better hold on to your hats. Hey folks, Sam I am here and we have what I think is going to be the last and final video from the Ripple Riddlers. They sent me a private message saying that they were leaving Twitter, they have done so, uh, but that they would probably be releasing one more video and that was turned out yesterday. So I usually like to be a little further along before I do this first video, but there's some really time sensitive information in this one that we're about to jump into. Uh, so I wanted to do this one a little bit sooner. And so let's jump right in. Uh, first off, one of the one of my Twitter followers noticed that there is this single frame, this picture uh, that you see in the background here. Uh, in one of the very first frames of the video, it's only there for you know a fraction of a second. And what this is showing us, we have the crow from a previous riddle, and we've talked about that representing change, death, uh, creativity, magic of life, uh, higher perspective, intelligence, all, all kinds of things. We have this balloon, which is the XRP vehicle that I think he's telling us will take us to other planets. Now, when I saw this, I immediately thought about uh, this post from Joel Katz from uh, David Schwartz, who is who was asked the question, mathematically speaking, what is the highest price Ripple could potentially get to? And he says, well, it all depends on how big you want to dream. What if Ripple captures Bitcoin's current market share, $2? What if Ripple captures all the value of all high friction international payments that are now occurring, $20? And he points out there could be a multiplier on that from people holding XRP. Uh, what if Ripple captures the value of an increasing volume of international payments driven by the reduction in friction? Maybe $120, and he again points to the multiplier. What if the economy triples in size, the volume of the international payments increases, Ripple captures all of that, and people also use Ripple for all kinds of other things, like coil, and some of these other things that are coming out of X Spring, uh, because it either displaces Bitcoin or it equals in size a Bitcoin that's many times its current size. And we also expand the economy to other planets that use XRP and dot, dot, dot. So a lot of people were like, what other planets? What is he talking about? And what we think that means is uh, other worlds like stocks. I mean, you could use blockchain to replace the stock market. You could use it for options and futures trading, especially when you tie in something like Codius. Uh, you could use it for commodities. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of other worlds, uh, other planets that XRP could travel to that would vastly expand the use case. Uh, and I think in this picture right here, that's exactly what they're telling us is on the way. So get ready, folks. It's going to be a wild ride. Uh, let's start the video. Uh, it starts off with some stars here, and then we get this sound at two seconds in. And then four to five seconds, the visual appears, but we hear it first. Now, I'm not sure if this is two seconds from when the video was released, which would be uh, November 1st, or if it's the 2nd of November and then the visual appearing the 4th and 5th. I'm leaning towards the latter. Uh, and because what it's showing us is the firing of a hot air balloon, and you can see here we have one plus one plus one is three. Uh, these are cables that tie the balloon to the basket. They're also known as flying wires. Um, so I think what they're telling us is that these are the three preferred liquidity providers. And I've talked in other videos about how I think Ripple's going to need to warm up the liquidity pool and get get some money and some XRP moving around before they really uh, throw a lot of volume at it uh, because, you know, it could cause massive price swings and the thing could fall flat on its face. And so I think that's exactly what they're showing us. And what they're saying is that you're going to hear about it on the second, but not necessarily know what it is. And I think the way, of course, you guys are going to know because you've watched this video, but I think the way that, uh, that it might be apparent is in the daily volume starting on the first or the second. Um, and then also we have this triangular shaped coil right here. Now this is tubing that they're, they run in a hot air balloon. They run the uh, propane, liquid propane gas 
through this tubing and it makes its way around this coil up to the top and then down to the burner where it's uh, pushed out the jet and ignited. So what they're doing is preheating the fuel. And of course, warming up the liquidity pools, exactly what I've described. And I think they're letting us know that's about to happen in the first full week of November. So get ready. Okay, let's keep going. Now this stops on the 10th and 11th and the flame goes out there. And now we're back to the stars. <clears throat> I apologize, I'm dealing with a little bit of a cold here. Okay, uh, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not investment advice. This is for inter entertainment purposes only. And Ripple Riddler is telling us the same thing that XRP is also intended to be used as money or implying that that's maybe what's going on. Now, we're getting to the launch phase. The balloon's ready to go. Liquidity pools have been primed. We have these numbers counting up to eight. So if you go from the uh, end of the warm-up period on the 10th and 11th and you add eight days, that takes you to November 18th and 19th. What happens on November 18th? Well, SR 2018, SWIFT's mandatory update that's going to enable uh, XRAPID to interface with their network of 11,000 banks through Temenos and SAP and some of these other payment hubs, that, become, that goes live on the 18th. So 18th and 19th, the balloon launches. Now, we also have this guy down here in the banker's hat wearing this faded, worn out purple suit. And we're gonna take a look at him as well here. Now we have the cipher, it's three rotating rings. I've not even begun to try and decode this or what it means. If anybody wants to do that, please be my guest. <laughs> now here you can see we've got the fresh crisp new leather glove of the ripple riddler handing the silver xrp token to the man who is standing in front of the balloon for the ride okay and i've told i pointed out his purple is his suit is faded and if you look at this edge this looks very threadbare so it's worn out it's seen better days you know it's at the end of its lifespan it's time to you know cycle it into something new now my twitter followers based on this lettering around the edge of the coin were able to um, identify this and it turns out to be an american liberty 225th anniversary gold coin and in the description and James Daly points out, our newest Lady Liberty is a modern rendition of this iconic figure that embodies the ideals of freedom and equality first set forth in, the, in our Declaration of Independence. And of course, <laughs> the video is titled The Declaration of Independence. So, uh, you know, that's the, the, he's declaring independence by giving this XRP token. Now, notice the token silver. Why is that? Well... Silver just happens to have a lot of industrial uses. It has a lot of utility, just like XRP. So there's another clue. Uh, okay, let's get back to the video. So he's handing this token off. Uh, now, this could also be some, I think it's payment for the ride, which is access to the global financial network but it could also represent uh, Ripple giving a portion of their XRP holdings that they have locked away in escrow, at least optioning it to uh, the central banks, to the IMF as uh, to be used for the SDR, which is referred to as a basket of currencies. Look at what we have in the background, the, the uh, hot air balloon basket. And so that's being handed off as payment. And Ripple Riddler is now standing in front of the basket saying, behold, or possibly come one, come all, you know, join me. And the numbers are going away because we have launched. And of course, the first thing we're low to the ground. One plus one plus one is three. Listen to what I'm telling these. Uh, 
X current, X rapid, X vita, saying you know the the convergence of those is a, is a key por- uh, component of what's happening here. Notice that he is holding on with both hands uh, to the basket because, folks, we are about to be in for the ride of a lifetime. And we're floating over that, and we move from there to the next landscape, which we believe is Liechtenstein. Now, if you don't know what uh, Liechtenstein is, uh, watch the Digital Asset Investors videos. He does a great job of covering that. And now we're even, we're even higher. We're up among the clouds. If you remember the previous video, he was playing the piano on the clouds. But there's something significant that's happened here. And this one, we're actually going to go down right before we start going down before this murder of crows flies across. And you'll also notice down here in the corner, a lens flare appears. Now, you can add these, but this could also be a natural artifact. Um, it's not a hexagon, but it's, it's seven-sided. It, it's created by the iris and the camera. Uh, has that has blades that make that shape. And when you get a point light source, you can get reflection in between the lens elements. That's what causes it. But these are blue and purple, which kind of makes me think maybe it's representative of something. I'm not sure. And it's also leading the way across the screen before the murder of crows flies. And here come the crows. <coughs> Apologize, I got a little bit of a cold. And then all of a sudden, we are looking at the clouds. Now, there may be an eagle right here, or, or the phoenix, perhaps. Uh, wing right here, eye right here, beak, and lower beak, and mouth right there. Uh, possibly. I'm not, not sure. But the main thing I notice is that we're looking at what we think is the Andromeda galaxy through a hole in the clouds. Okay, and it turns out that's something called the fall streak hole. Uh, it is uh, such holes are formed when water temperature in the clouds is below freezing, but the water is in a super cold state has not frozen yet due to the lack of ice nucleation. When ice crystals do form, a domino effect is set off, uh, causing the water droplets around the crystal to evaporate. This leaves a large, often circular hole in the cloud. So we've got now a couple of hints saying that, you know, the Phoenix is coming. Phoenix represents transformational change. And we've got this hole in the cloud that was set up by this domino effect. Okay. And then it's all pointing to Andromeda. So what is Andromeda? Uh, it was the daughter of uh, Cepheus and Cassiopeia. Um, they, uh, Cassiopeia was apparently an obnoxious loudmouth, bragged about how beautiful her daughter was. Poseidon didn't like that uh, comparison, and he took her, stripped her naked, chained her to a rock, and uh, sent his sea monsters after her. Turns out, though, Perseus was flying overhead on his winged horse with Medusa's head that he had just slaughtered. And he comes down, he kills the monster, he breaks the chain, sets her free, they get married and live happily ever after. And of course, Perseus is the ancestor to the Persians who are the Iranian people. Now, as I've been digging into this, a lot of what's coming really seems to be centered around uh, this new payment network that's coming out in Europe. Uh, there's a lot of components to it and Ripple is just all over it. And so I think what we're being told here is that, you know, there, there's a uh, series of events, dominoes that have been set in motion that's going to bring about this transformational change and Iran is going to be the trigger. And that is the sanctions that the U.S. is trying to force everyone to comply with. And not, you know, they don't want anyone trading with Iran. They want to choke them out and starve their people and this and that. And, you know, I showed you with the Putin video how um, fed up the international community is with the dollar and everything that's going on around that. 
and how they're looking for an alternative. And I think Ripple and XRP is going to be that solution that they're putting in place. Uh, and this is a kind of a clue for us to, to let us know, yeah, that's, that's what's coming. Okay, let's continue on the journey. Now, it's also spinning backwards, which means it may be undoing some of the events, some of the wrongs that have been done. And now we are off through the wormhole. <clears throat> and of course, it goes through a series of changing colors. Um, I'm sure those colors represent something. It goes from blue to purple to gold to red to pink. Uh, I haven't looked those up yet. And then here we get this. Now, I'm going to slow this down and play it quarter speed because there is I think there's a cipher that appears kind of right around here as this thing comes into place and this says target acquired or target locked sorry but it's an R instead of a T and I'm going to explain that but see right there there's the cipher coming in right along here and right around here and I think that's telling us the significance of this graphic, but of course we found this graphic, it's right here, and it says Targer locked, so I don't think Targer is a clue, I think it's just they found this image and used it, um, and then they added their cipher around here, which I was, which is this these numbers that are coming in and changing right there. And then we get these circles with numbers in them, uh, six, I think it was six of those around the circle, some of them count down, like this one. Some of them cycle through a range. And I think what these are showing us is significant dates of things that are in place, you know, signed contracts, ready to go. You know, the uh, Fed, the United States Federal Reserve Faster Payments Task Force is still in the comments phase. They're not going to implement until 2019. I'm sure there's all kinds of other stuff that's coming. You know, when I've talked about my price prediction, I've pointed out that Whatever it does, end of year, I think it could double uh, by the end of 2019 or even more, even beyond that. And I think if, if somebody wants to take these dates and sort of match them up with events and meetings and deadlines and so forth, I think those will give us some more clues as to what's coming in 2019, some of the things that we can expect. Okay, let's bring it back up to speed here. <clears throat> Now we're into gold, and then we're gonna go red and pink. And then the chains break. So some people are like, oh yeah, that's uh, Bitcoin uh, XRP separating. Absolutely not. Uh, this is so much bigger than, you know, the two cryptocurrencies diverging and not being tied together at the hip. Uh, on the small scale, you know, the U.S. has the, the U.S. government has really subjugated and held captive the planet to do their bidding. Uh, they do that through, uh, you know, sending trucks of money over to other countries. They do that through sanctions. They do that through threats, intimidation, harassment by keeping this massive war machine that outpaces the spending of all these other countries. Um, and you know, they do that through the dollar being the reserve currency of the planet. So at a minimum, I think that's what they're telling us is that that relationship, that dominance over the globe is being broken here. Uh, you know, taking it a step beyond that, it could be talking about XRP eventually. Um, you know, if, if you if you are using your time and your skills to produce something, the fruits of your labor, and somebody comes along and has a claim to that and takes 30%, well, you're 30% a slave. And, you know, people all around the planet are wage slaves to their government. So it could also be referencing, uh, you know, the breaking of the chains of slavery of the people to the government. And, you know, one day, I have no doubt that we're going to evolve beyond the need for governments. We can solve these problems with markets. Governments take and divide us and turn us against one another as we vie for the, you know, Frodo's ring. 
whereas markets encourage us to work together and cooperate and uh, get along with one another. And I think part of this process will be looked back on history as a stepping stone in our evolution as a species. And I think that's, you know, on the more optimistic side of what breaking of the chains here is representing, um, you know, it's coming. We'll be there one day. It may be a long ways off, but you know, we're going to keep working towards it and we're moving in that direction for sure. And then it's fireworks, baby. Now, some people suggest that this is, uh, remember, remember the 5th of November Guy Fox day where, uh, Guy Fox tried to blow up the parliament building in the United Kingdom. Of course, they turned it into something else to celebrate the state rather than, the uh, the individual who wanted to get rid of the state, and they do fireworks. There's also people saying it's New Year's, uh, New Year's Eve, celebrating the end of the year, and how far XRP has come. I think both of those are probably valid. <clears throat> and then, uh, but in the bigger picture, I think it's sort of celebrating this evolutionary step that we're taking towards freeing ourselves and creating this this new system, this new way of interacting with each other. I mean, this is really going to be massive in scale. And I think very few of us really comprehend the magnitude of the change and the journey that we're on. And then of course you have the XRP uh, universe with all of these things floating around in it. And that is the future. And then we get the, uh, standard ripple riddler sweeper which has a code in it that we still haven't cracked okay uh, a few other things i want to point out for you guys if you remember this puzzle we had this was the price graph is what we thought it was it kind of went down up tapered down and then starts the big climb into november and december triple witch oh yeah that was that was the other thing um there is the burning of the clocks going back to the fireworks where they burn the clocks and that was in a previous video that's done in the uk on december 22nd which i think is a reference to the triple witch pointing us to say hey that's going to be another significant date when all the options in the u.s roll over and the fund managers have the ability to either roll them back into the same thing, the bonds and stocks and so forth, or move them into this new class of assets that's absolutely exploding. What do you think they're gonna do? Okay, uh, so there's the price graph that they gave us, and a one of my Twitter followers sent me this. Down, up, tapering down, and guess where we are? <laughs> it's amazing how close those are, isn't it? Okay. Uh, the Banker Insider that I've talked about, he's pointed out that uh, in his view with what he knows from uh, who he is and who he works for and so forth, that um, XRP will rise rapidly in 24 hours. He thinks it will be 50 plus or even multi multiples of 50. Again, we had the Declaration of Independence coin was $100. <clears throat> so the Ripple Riddler may be telling us it's a $100 rise that we might see this first full week of November ending on the 10th or 11th. And he posted this, which uh, is the symbol for bright. But I also found that aside from this little line connecting into here, that it is the symbol for the Ming dynasty right here. And it turns out that the Ming dynasty ran into a little problem. During the last years, an economic crisis developed that was centered on sudden widespread lack of the empire's chief medium of exchange, silver. Of course, the coin was silver. Um, and what happened is they had all these trading partners who were exchanging silk for silver and you know, various things for silver, and those dried up for one reason or another. And the state, of course, demand, or the empire demanded its taxes in silver, the farmers were getting paid in um, for their crops in copper, but because of the liquidity crisis, the price of silver had just shot up relative so high relative to everything else that there was no way that they 
could trade enough copper into silver in order to pay the state the taxes. And so the whole thing just came crashing down. And I think uh, that's what uh, Kichiro, if I'm saying his name right, hopefully, uh, is, is telling us here with this little hint that, you know, there may not be enough XRP out there uh, and we might see a dramatic price rise for that exact reason. Okay. And uh, one last thing here, I just want to let you know that if you're sending an electronic message that you don't use your physical mailing address, you use something called the elect. Uh, tell you what, I'll let these guys explain it to you. You can use electronic mail. You can write a letter to your friend using an internet address instead of using your regular street address. The letter will arrive in seconds, under three seconds to Australia. Three seconds to Australia? <laughs> Folks, we are in for an amazing ride. Hold on to your hats. I'm Sam I am. We'll catch you next video.